Hello, it's uh, Myozang Kodo uh, of Zen Buddhism Ireland and it's been a while since I took up this uh, reading of Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind by Suzuki Roshi and I haven't posted for a while so I want to continue with our reading <clears throat> of the great uh, Suzuki's uh, work uh, with the chapter on page 46, Nothing Special. Um, one line jumps out at me in this wonderful chapter. For a mother with children, having children is nothing special. So this is, this is Zazen. And he says that is Zazen. So Zazen is, according to Master Suzuki Roshi here, um, it is the most ordinary thing in the world. Enlightenment, awakening, is the most ordinary thing in the world. Of course, the children are miraculous, are gifts, are amazing presences, are awesome beings, the children that the mother has. And their ordinary life. They are the mother's children. This is so intimate that its mystery almost is has fallen away, dropped away. Um, Zazen is something we we do every day, sitting Zazen. It is not a journey anywhere. It is a, it's not even an arrival. It is a residing. Um, Suzuki Roshi throughout uh, this chapter, nothing special, um, keeps indicating that Zazen is, is, is no great mystery and that enlightenment is no great Thing. It's nothing special to those that have awakened. Um, it reminds me of the analogy, the, that great analogy of enlightenment or Kensho, particularly um, being like a room or a house that a burglar tries hard, very hard to break into through the doors, the windows, trying all the locks, going to great efforts to break into the house to steal its treasure. And then when, when that burglar finally gains entry, he stands in an empty house with nothing in it. This is very similar to what Master Suzuki Roshi is saying in Nothing Special. If you continue this simple practice every day, you will obtain some wonderful power. Before you attain it, it is something wonderful. But after you attain it, it is nothing special. So, like those beautiful children that the mother has, to the mother they are ordinary life, normal life. Um, so, he draws a, he gives a couple of examples, Suzuki Roshi, in this chapter. As a Chinese poem says, I went and I returned, it was nothing special. Rosan, famous for its misty mountains, Seko for its water. So people think it must be wonderful to see the famous range of mountains covered by mist and the water said to cover all the earth. But if you go there, you will just see water and mountains, nothing special. This is a bit like uh, travel, modern tourism and travel. We go, we fantasize, our, our mind full of dreams and fantasies about going to Japan, visiting a city in a foreign country in Asia or Africa or somewhere else in Europe or North America that oh this city I always wanted to see and we have an idealized fantasized version of the place and when we get there what is what is flowing what is in course is the ordinary life the ordinary life of things in Japan in in uh, in Beijing in New York in Dublin in Paris in Madrid um, when we get there, it's 
it's just more ordinary life just the amazing presence of the ordinary of the habitual it's a kind of a mystery that for people who have no experience of enlightenment enlightenment is something wonderful but if they attain it it is nothing but yet it is not nothing do you understand so it is something it is nothing it is not a dualistic experience it is beyond dualistic thinking beyond intellectual dualism and the way the mind encounters reality because reality is beyond that beyond the way the mind encounters reality everything is buddha nature says master suzuki roshi but dogen reads it in this way everything is buddha nature there is a difference if you say everything has buddha nature it means buddha nature is in each existence so buddha nature and each existence are different but when you say everything is buddha nature it means everything is buddha nature itself when there is no buddha nature there is nothing at all something apart from buddha nature is just a delusion it may exist in your mind but such things actually do not exist so to be human to exist is to be one with buddha nature buddha nature is existent like that idea that everything is mind and mind itself is buddha everything that exists is awakened nature you are awakened nature but like a child who stands in shallow water drowning or a, a child who, who has maybe slipped and fallen in shallow water a very young child can drown in this shallow water simply because they do not know if they stand up on their own two feet they are saved This is the reality, the existence. All we must do is stand up on our own two feet, right where we are. And we are saved, we are awake. So we're there already. This is it, where you are now, at this moment. There's no journey to go on. There's no arrival. So we sit, we sit again, we sit again, with no gaining mind, with no thought of gaining or attaining. We reside in awakened nature, we reside as awakened nature. There is nothing to be taught and nothing to be learned. But you must be taught that and you must learn it so um thanks for uh your attention uh, we're finished the first of the three parts of uh, zen mind beginner's mind uh, which is right practice and the next time i'll be taking up part two right attitude looking at the single-minded way on page 53. So uh, thanks for, again for your attention. Myozan Kodo from Zen Buddhism Ireland. Um, if you want to email me, it's myozankodo at gmail.com. And you can check out my website at zenbuddhism.ie. Enjoy your life.